Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Today we're lighting all the candles and the Christ candle. The scripture reading is Isaiah 42, 5 through 7. This is what God the Lord says. He, crea he who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping this this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him love, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he such mean estate where ox and lamb are feeding the end from fear for all who hear the silent word is speaking this this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him love, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, go Come peasant king to love him, the king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard in And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a king wearing a magnificent crown. No, Dad, that's not it. Oh, really? 
let me try it again. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a powerful, well-trained soldier. No, Dad, you did it again. That's not right. Okay, uh, how about this? And this will be a sign for you. You will find a democratically elected president. What? No. A trendy motivational speaker. No way. A big tech CEO. A movie star. Time traveling cyborg? No, no, none of those are right. The shepherds one couldn't find any of those. Okay then, little Miss Know It All. What did they find? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Oh, that's right, a baby. Does that even make sense? A, a baby is totally helpless. Yeah, but if Jesus didn't come as a baby, mm -hmm. then he would have known what it was like to grow up. Ah, oh, but wait, why did he have to grow up? That's easy, to save us. Ah, well then that means that the best part about Christmas is... The baby. Right, the baby. Oh, well, I guess it's time you get some sleep. We got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. No, we're not done with the story. Okay, just a little longer. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is. Jesus, my prayer is that in the next few minutes, no matter where we've gathered, where we're watching, how we're listening, that your Holy Spirit's voice would be very clear to us. I ask, Father, that you would help us to understand that the mercy and the grace of your Son is unleashed in our lives when we place our faith and our trust in him. It's in his name that I pray. Amen. When, uh, when was the last time you had an arm or a leg fall asleep? Have you woken up in the middle of the night and, and you couldn't feel your arms? Or, or maybe you've been sitting with your legs crossed or, or sitting on the floor in, in some odd position and suddenly you realize that, that you can't feel your leg. It, it's fallen asleep. It, it's such a weird experience, isn't it? Suddenly not being able to control it or, or feel it or move it. When was the last time you had an arm or a leg fall asleep? A lot of years ago, I, I was in my office at Hidden Creek, and it was late on a winter afternoon. I, I think it was a Wednesday, and, and I was really sleepy. I, I had some sort of relaxing classical music on, and I got to the point where it was really tough to keep my eyes open. Now, at the time, I, I had a couple of big reclining chairs in my office. They, they were facing my desk, and as I looked out on the chairs, I thought, well, I think I'm going to get up and, and go sit in one of them uh, just for a little while, and, and, and then I'll get back to work. Well, as soon as I sat down, I, I thought it would be a good idea to, to push back and recline for a minute. Well, a couple of minutes later, I, I realized my hands were pretty cold, and so I zipped out my polar fleece vest and tucked my arms into the vest and uh, my hands started getting warm. I, I started getting a little more relaxed. The lights were low. My hands were warm. The chair was reclined. My feet were up. And the next thing I knew, I was on the train to Sleepy Town. And dreams raced through my mind. Now I've fallen asleep in my office only a couple of times in the years that I've, I've served in ministry. I think that day was the best nap I've ever had in a workplace. Now, I don't know how long I'd been uh, asleep, but, but the phone rang and I, w I was startled back to reality. I jumped up in my sleepy state and couldn't figure out where my arms were. 
I stumbled across the office to answer the phone and I struggled to pull my arms out of my vest when I realized both of my arms had fallen asleep. So much so that, that my hands wouldn't work. Now I, I knocked the phone off the receiver and I, I bent over onto my desk and I said, <clears throat> Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Hidden Creek Community Church. This is Tim. How can I help you? The person on the other end said, Hey, Tim, this is Meg. I was just calling to see how you're doing. For the next several minutes, I, I tried to get my hands to wake up. And you know how it is when the, the tingling and the pinpricks start racing through your, your fingers or your toes. Now, you know how that process works. You think, huh. I think I'll bump my hand onto something to, to see if it's still asleep. And then the pain kicks in again and, and you wait and you wait and you wait. The process of reawakening an arm or a leg that's fallen asleep, boy, it's a rough process, isn't it? As it wakes up, sometimes it feels worse before it feels better. Now, we're kind of in a time like that, aren't we? In a lot of ways, I feel like our normal routine, our predictable paths, our functional future has come to a halt. Now, we've been put on hold in oh so many ways in the last months. For us right now, so many things are out of place in life. Our ability to gather to worship. At, as, a, as a country, we're divided politically. So many people are, are out of work. And so many jobs have disappeared. We're, we're dealing with this virus. Our, our days are dark and our nights are long. The skies are gray and rain seems to always be falling. But there's hope on the other side. The process of waking back up, getting back on track, moving forward in a predictable way, it's coming. Right now, our, our arms and our legs might feel numb and asleep. And for some, there's tingling in our limbs and, and there's this uncomfortable thing that, that seems to be happening as we wait for the awakening to come. Now, there are no circumstances that God does not know about. There's nothing beyond His control. And there's not a time where He is not active in reaching out to and calling people to himself. It was to a lost world that, that Jesus came so long ago. It was into a country that was occupied by a military force that, that Jesus stepped into. It was a dark time when, when God seemed to be so silent. Into this, Jesus entered. It was to a forgotten town in a rural place in an unlikely stable that, that Jesus was born. In that time and in that setting, Jesus, wrapped in cloths, settled into the manger's hay. In the next few minutes, I'm going to look at the Christmas account as, as recorded by Luke. And, and here we'll see that in spite of all the unlikely circumstances, God delivered his plan and his person to redeem the world. In that place, Jesus came to wake up the world with salvation. Listen to Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. Now, let's stop here for a moment. This was a rough time into which Jesus came. The nation of Israel was under foreign occupation. Foreign occupation by an empire that was held together by brute force and merciless laws. In Matthew's account, we hear of, of Herod the Great, who was brutal in his own right. You'll remember from Matthew's Christmas account uh, that it was when the wise men came to visit Jesus and they stopped by to talk to Herod, that Herod heard what was going on. And when they returned the wise men by another way, Herod knew that he had been tricked and he issued a decree 
that all the boys in the vicinity of Bethlehem, two years old and younger, should be killed. Jesus was born under the grip of the mighty Roman Empire and under the shadow of a sinister king who ruled in Jerusalem. It was into a dangerous world that Jesus came. And, and according to Caesar's decree, an order that he spoke over the empire, a count of all the people was to be taken, and that count was supposed to take place in each, each person's ancestral town. Now this was a huge shakeup in the empire and in Israel. Uh, this required a huge number of people to travel at their own expense to a place their family was from. Now, can you imagine how a decree like this would, would clog the airways and the highways and the train and the bus lines if this took place today? Hotels and gas stations, restaurants and diners would be packed with travelers. Now, for many, this would be a financial burden that was huge. During Jesus' time, there was no paid family leave, no unemployment benefits. No paid vacation. People's work had to stop. People had to shoulder the burden. People had to move and comply with the law in accordance with Rome's decree. This was no easy time, and Mary and Joseph were caught up in it. Now, earlier in, in the Gospel of Luke, in, in Luke's record of Jesus' life, Earlier, we find that an angel had come to Mary and told her that, that she had been chosen to be the mother of the Messiah. Now, even though she was a virgin, Scripture says, the angel said to her, she would conceive by the Holy Spirit under the overshadowing power and presence of God, and that the one born to her would be called the Son of the Most High. Matthew's Gospel tells us about about Joseph's dilemma. Now, Joseph, not understanding how all of this could take place, an angel had to visit him in a dream to calm his fears and to confirm Mary's story. Now, that's quite an experience to process, isn't it? Can you imagine all of that from Mary and Joseph's perspective? All of those things, the travel, uh, the pregnancy, uh, the news, all of those things would be real stressors, wouldn't they? Now, back in, in Luke chapter 2, look at verses 4 to 7. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, a, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Now, from a human perspective, this whole thing seems like the wrong way for the Messiah to come the wrong place for him to be born. Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, presumably along with lots of other travelers. We don't know how long they searched for a place to rest, but we know that they ended up in a stable because there was no room for them in the inn or in the, in the guest room. Now, during the first century and, and for many centuries after, Inns were not fancy places. Sometimes they were a large open room with a common fire and floor space to spread out your blanket, and that was about it. There were no big beds, no ice machines, no fluffy pillows or running water. Inns were very simple places, but they were all full. You'd be lucky to find a place, an inn, that, that would offer a common meal. And if they did, it might be lentil soup or, or flatbread with olive oil. Or in the right season, you, you might get a fig or two. But the conditions were pretty sparse. Now imagine entering Bethlehem looking for a place to find shelter. Birth pains beginning, contractions happening, water breaking. 
only to find out that place after place was full. Imagine being given the only space available, a stable, the equivalent of, of a storage shed behind the Motel 6. This was a place where, where animals of travelers would be kept. For some travelers, it might be sheep, maybe a donkey or two, maybe, maybe a traveler with a camel or a goat, their, their livestock would be stored there. This place would have seen lots of animals over the years, along with all the wear and, and tear and the smells that, that they would bring. It's likely that this spot was a limestone cave or, or a grotto adjacent to the inn, a place where the animals could be kept safe. This stable seems like the wrong place for the Messiah to step into the world. The manger, a wrong place for him to sleep. And the sound he first heard, the rustling of animals and the chewing of hay, the wrong sounds for a savior. Now 2020, it's a truly messed up year. This may feel to us like the wrong way to celebrate Christmas. Separated, lonely, remotely quarantined, restricted. Where you're at might feel like the wrong place to celebrate Christmas. You're at home, you're listening in your cars, maybe you're watching this on your phone or your computer. It was to you that Jesus came. He came to people like us, unlikely people, in unlikely places, in unlikely ways. Jesus was born in an unexpected place, a stable, quietly, discreetly. The Savior of humanity was born, born to a young couple displaced and weary from travel. These two that night we're greeted by the tiny face of God with us, Emmanuel. They held the hands and feet that would be pierced, the chubby creased baby legs of the one who would walk on water, arms that would hug sinners and welcome those who trust in him. They saw his chest expanding and contracting with the breath, the air of earth, so that we might breathe the breath of eternal life. This was an unlikely welcome for the King of Kings, an unlikely entrance for the Messiah. Yet he's the one who enters into our brokenness to bring us wholeness. He steps into our darkness to bring us light. He touched our sickness. He held our disease to be healing for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. This is our God. This is our Savior. He was born to Mary and Joseph in a stable tucked behind an inn in a backwoods town. He was, he was born to them. He was born to us. For unto us was born that night in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. In that quiet place, in that sleepy town, on that silent night, God began to wake up the world, and he wakes us up today.
sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly hosts sing alleluia, Christ the Savior. Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, rain. from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace Jesus Lord at thy birth Jesus Lord Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. This Christmas will probably be very different than any of us have, have ever experienced. <laughs> Don't be freaked out by it, though. What seems like a confusing, out of whack, different than normal season is the season, the path, in the experience that God has, has planned for us this year. There are no circumstances that God does not know about. There's nothing beyond his control. And there's not a time when, when he's not active in reaching out to and calling you to himself. As followers of Jesus, as people who have placed our faith and our trust in him, be encouraged by the, the Christmas account of God coming to us, Jesus coming to you and me, and the Holy Spirit living in us. May the Christmas account, the, the, the blessing uh, of Galatians 4, 4 to 7, be an encouragement to you. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but you are God's child. And since you are God's child, God has also made you an heir. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good life.